Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create the waiting queue in Battle Royale Tycoon. We're going to create the logic to have our guests enter the building, perform an action, and leave. Let's get started. Okay, so here's the waiting queue from the previous video. Guests are being automatically added, and they're firing an event when they reach the front of the queue. After reaching the front of the queue, they are simply sent away. The game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the Steam page and add it to your wishlist and follow. So, based on the events we added in the previous video, now let's create some logic for our building to make the interaction based on those events. Since this building represents a bathroom, we're going to grab a guest from the queue in here, send him to a toilet placed in here, have him play an animation and leave through the exit in here. Then repeat the process for every guest on the queue. Okay, so to make our building logic, let's create a new c -sharp script, name it cm building bathroom. I'm adding the prefix cm simply to avoid naming conflicts with the actual game classes since I'm doing this video on the game's actual code base. Now inside here, let's first remove all of this since we want this as a nice clean class without being dependent on model behavior. Let's start off by making a constructor, so public cm building bathroom. So on our constructor, first of all, we're going to receive a reference to our waiting queue. Then for the logic of the building, we're going to get a list of positions for our toilets. So a list of vector three for the toilet position list. And let's store these as member variables. Okay, now let's just spawn some sprites on our toilet position so we can visually see them. So go through each vector3 toilet position in toilet position list and in here I'm going to go into the world sprite which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com so I'm going to grab from the utilities a sprite and create it on this toilet position with a vector3.1 Okay, so back into our game handler, in here, let's create our building. So down here, in order to create our building, first we need to have a list of our toilet positions. So list a vector three, a toilet position list is gonna be a new list. And in here, I'm going to give it... Okay, I have two positions in here. So let's finally create the building bathroom, building bathroom equals new building bathroom and I'm going to give it the waiting queue that we created previously and the toilet position list. And let's also go down here and remove this code for sending them automatically. We're going to leave the pop-up to know when the guest arrived in front. All right, so let's test and we should be able to see some sprites on our toilet position list. Yep, as you can see, both toilet positions are being spawned with a sprite. Okay, since they're in the correct position, now let's actually spawn the correct sprite. So in my game handler, I'm going to add a private sprite and call it a toilet sprite and make it a serialized field so we can set it in the editor. And down here on the constructor, let's also send the sprite. And here, let's receive the sprite for the toilet sprite. And it's what we're going to use to spawn in here. Okay, so there you go, the sprites are correct. All right. So now back into our bathroom code, we need to identify which toilets are empty so we can send a guest in there. In order to do that, let's create a simple subclass to store the toilet position and the guest currently using it. So down here, I'm going to make a private class and call it toilet. Now in here, I'm going to have a public guest, which is the guest that is using this particular toilet and a public vector three for the toilet position. And go up here, instead of having a toilet position list, we're actually going to have a list of toilets and call it toilet list. So let's instantiate that list. And in here, when we're cycling through the list, we're going to add a new toilet and we're going to give it the toilet position to this toilet position. And the guest stays as null since it is empty. Okay, now down here on our subclass, let's make a simple function to test if it is empty. So make a public bool is empty, and in here we're simply going to return if our guest is null. If it is null, then it is empty. If not, then someone is in here. 
And on our bathroom, let's make a private toilet called Get Empty Toilet. This is what we're going to use in order to get a toilet that we can assign to a specific guest. So in here, let's just cycle through the toilet list. In toilet list. And here, if toilet dot is empty, then we're going to return this toilet. If not, then we're going to return no. Okay. So up here, let's subscribe to the waiting queue event of on guests arrived at the front of the queue. We need to subscribe to this event, which will be fired when a guest arrives at the front of a queue. And in here, let's call a function and we're going to name it try send guest to toilet. And let's make this function in here. So this function needs to test if we have an empty toilet. If so, it's going to try to grab a guest from our waiting queue. If it successfully grabs a guest, it will send that guest to that toilet. So let's first make a toilet empty toilet equals get empty toilet. Okay. Now if empty toilet is different from no, so we have an empty one. If not, then we're not going to send anyone anywhere. So in here, let's grab our guests. So going to the waiting queue dot get first in queue. This is going to be a guest. And again, if the guest is not no, then that means someone is waiting in there. So this is the guest that we're going to send to that particular toilet. So I'm going to go into the empty toilet, make a function called set guest. I'm going to give it this guest and then I'm going to go into my guest and I'm going to move him towards the empty toilet dot get position. So go down here and let's make these functions. So first of all, a public void set guest, which will receive a guest object and it will send set the internal guest object to this guest object and a public vector three get position. It will return the toilet position. Okay, our logic should be correctly working. So when a guest reaches the front of the queue, it will fire this event, which will be caught by this function in here. So this function will trigger this function. And in here, we're going to test if we have an empty toilet. If we do, then this is not going to be null. Then we're going to try to grab the first guest in our queue. If we can grab, then that means someone is waiting in there. So we're going to send this guest into this toilet, set the internal value. So we make sure that this is no longer empty and we're going to move the guest towards this toilet position. All right, so let's test this. We should be able to see a guest enter the queue. When he reaches the front, he will fire the event and be moved towards an empty toilet. Okay, here's my scene. Here's my waiting queue. When he reaches the front, he triggers the event and he gets called. That one goes into that one, that one goes into that one. Okay, great. So the logic is correctly working. Both of them are going each to its specific empty toilet. And since there are no more empty toilets, everybody else is just waiting. Great. Now in here, let's add some debug sprites to be able to see if the toilet is empty or not, just so it helps to visualize the logic that is going on inside this object. So when you create our toilet sprite, let's create another sprite into our toilet position plus a bit to the right. So let's say 50 zero. Since by default it is empty, by default it won't be green. And in here, let's make a function updater, create it, and this will trigger an action. A function updater triggers an action every update. So in here, we're simply going to set the caller to this debug sprite. So let's store our world sprite, call it debug sprite. And in here, we're simply going to set the caller based on whether or not this particular toilet is empty. So in here, instead of creating the toilet in here, let's grab a reference, toilet, toilet equals new toilet, add it in here, set the caller if it is empty, then we're going to put the caller in green. If not, then caller.rep. Okay, this is just an easy way so we can easily visualize which toilets are empty, which are occupied, so we can easily see the logic going on inside this class. Okay, so we can see our debug sprites in here. And now this one, when the first gets reaches the front, both of them become red. Okay, great. So we can easily visualize the internal workings of our class. That is very helpful for debugging. Now, when they reach the toilet position, let's have them play an animation. When completed, they're going to leave and then call the next one and so on and so forth. So back in my bathroom in here, when we got the move to function, 
Now this function calls an action when the guest arrives at the given position. So this action in here will be triggered when the guest arrives at the toilet position. So what we want to do in here is go into the guest and I have a function here that plays a animation and in there it also has another action that is fired when the animation is complete. So when the animation is complete, let's first of all clear the guest from our toilet. So go into the empty toilet, which is the toilet that this guest is using. Call a function called clear guest. So go down here, make a public void clear guest and we're simply going to set our guest to null. So this toilet is now empty again. And after we empty it, let's just send this guest to move to a exit position. Now we're going to go up here into our constructor and we're going to receive a vector three for our exit position. And we're going to store it internally in here. Okay, so our logic in here, we're testing if we have an empty toilet. If we do, we grab a guest. If we also have a guest, then we set that guest into that empty toilet. We send him to the toilet position. When he reaches that point, it triggers this action. In this action, he's going to play an animation. When the animation is completed, it will trigger this action. When this action gets triggered, we clear the guest from the toilet, so it's empty again, and we move him towards the exit position. Okay, so let's go into our game handler and we have to send them a exit position. So let's say a new vector three, seven, four, five, two, four, five. That should be good. So let's test and see if all of that logic is correctly working. Okay, here's a guest on the queue. He goes in, he reaches the front. One of them goes in there, the other one in there. When they reach, they're gonna play a certain animation. Okay. Okay, the animation is completed. You can see the toilets are now empty and they leave the bathroom. Okay, great, everything is working. So the logic is working perfectly, but as you can see, no one else is entering from the queue. We need to try to grab another guest when this one actually leaves. So back in our code here, on our bathroom, in the end, when he arrives at the exit position, we need to request another guest from our queue. Okay, here we are again. Guest enters the queue, reaches the front, goes to his toilet. He occupies it. He plays a certain animation. When the animation is completed, he leaves. And when he reaches the end, and yep, there you go. He grabbed both of them, and there you go. So there you have it. We have successfully connected our waiting queue to a building. The building has its own logic which requests a guest when needed and gets notified when one reaches the front of the queue. In the next video, we're going to add the ability to modify the positions in our queue. Again, the game is still in development, so if you like the concept, go to the Steam page, add it to your wishlist and follow. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.